And so it is a beautiful day this morning and the, the sun is shining down and there is gladness in my heart and a sense of um, anticipation. I'm trying to understand uh, constant, constantly really um, there's so many parts of the Bible that have just become clearer as I move it more into this world of the Spirit. And in relation to the Spirit, I think what happens or what has happened or what may happen is that one is obliged to stalk oneself the my nature and my um, self-obsession and um, self-importance are forever alive and I need to to trick that um, spirit um, I can't detach myself from it but I can trick it in a, in a manner in order to keep walking um, in with intent and with impeccability and what I find is that the more I focus on these things the more every single aspect and moment of my life become imbued with spiritual power and significance and so my actions really become um, I, I can't afford to be lazy should we say I need to um, maintain my attention but being aware of it I can decide where to direct it and my decision must be based on um, omens and once we understand that there are many omens around us we begin to see more and more and we have a choice as it were but also certain spirits will choose us and we have to be receptive and cautious and test the spirits as the Bible does advise there are so many parts of the Bible that I'm interested in exploring one area is um, um, the Ishmaelites um, the uh, uh, the race that came from Hagar and um, Abraham and it's a very significant story of course because Hagar was was cast out by um, by Sarah and Abraham conceded to her wishes and Hagar was about to had given she, she was I suppose a very godly woman she did she did as she was ordered and it was a desperate and doleful situation in which she was to go into the wilderness and her son would die and then she would die but power came the spirit came and she was given a blessing I, I believe there was a blessing at that point but um, the prognosis for her son and for her the the races that would spring from him were not as positive as those for Israel um, there seemed to be trouble brewing but nonetheless 
the blessing was given. So if it's true, as some people say, that that um, the Ish Ishmael is the, is the line that gave rise to the um, Arab people of today, who will always be among us, and here we, I am in Britain, and I live cheek by jowl with Arab people. Now, many of the Muslim people around me are actually um, Pakistan, from Pakistan and um, areas of northern India, and they are uh, not Arab-speaking, but Urdu-speaking nations. They are Muslims. But Arabic and Urdu are not distant languages. So I wonder whether they're not really sort of of the same stock in some way or closely related. So these are our brothers and sisters and we live cheek by jowl and they need that they, they lack the awareness of the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no salvation because they follow uh, Allah. And even though the Pope has apparently proclaimed that Allah is God, and I'm not qualified to comment on that, but certainly as a Christian, and any Christian must know that... Um, Without the Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have any access to God. And our um, Mohammedan brothers and sisters are not aware of the nature and personality and spiritual relevance of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So this must come. This must be revealed and um, all idolatrous and false worship must be removed from the land by a spiritual hand. I mean, I, I don't think this is a time for reaching for swords personally. I think uh, we are living in very different times and our swords have become plowshares and our lances have become pruning hooks or have been turned into pruning hooks. But there are still smiths in the land and uh, I am one of them. But uh, our, our battle is a spiritual battle so our weapons must be spiritual weapons and we need to build our armory and to do that we have to have integrity within our own spirit within my own spirit and so since I cannot defeat any waywardness within me I have to trick it and make it an ally in my daily endeavors it's a rather an odd concept really but I think this does seem to link up to the Bible the Bible is such a spiritually defined book there are so many events in the bible which are just event well i suppose every event in the bible really has a spiritual inclination or genesis and resolution so it's just becoming more and more attuned to the spirit to recognize it when it calls and to respond as a warrior um, appropriately and in faith and may the Lord Jesus Christ be praised on this beautiful morning and may his holy name be uplifted 
and worshipped forevermore. I was thinking of the hymn, uh, Christians Awake, where'er the sun doth his successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore till moons shall wax and wane no more. I don't know whether moons ceasing to wax and wane implies that the world will reach an end or is just is this just a reference to the end of our life in the world it's not bible it's just the conceit of a poet of course but there will be a time in my life when moons shall wax and wane no more because to some extent we create the world around us and when we cease to have consciousness then that creation process ceases but I, I'm dubious whether that implies an end of the world as such. Christians awake indeed. Um, this is the time when the Christian spirit must be revived, must revive in us and in our brothers and sisters. And I look forward to that day or to these coming days and I anticipate great bounty and wonder in the land. <laughs>